This is a $500 note from Jamaica, known to Jamaicans as a nanny, named after the woman depicted here. Who is this woman and why is her face on the country's second largest denomination in circulation? It's not known for certain, but historians believe Nanny was born in Ghana around 1686. It is there where she and her four brothers were captured and then taken to Jamaica as slaves. Africans enslaved by the British, including Nanny and her brothers, managed to escape and flee into the mountains, dense with jungle. They are known as Maroons. The word Maroon is most likely an English derivative of the Spanish word Cimarron, which means wild or untamed, often referring to cattle. The Maroons build up rebel villages where life carries on. Nanny becomes the leader of a settlement in the Blue Mountain region. The village is later renamed Nanny Town. Nanny Town is made up of peaceful people, farming and trading with other Maroon villages. The British, relying heavily on slave labor to keep their economy alive, make attempts to recapture the Maroons. But Nanny is prepared for this. She trains the people of her village to be warriors. They are skilled in guerrilla warfare. They camouflage themselves with foliage and mud. Lookouts are placed throughout the jungles surrounding Nanny Town. And if any approaching British are spotted, the lookouts alarm each other by blowing an abang, a hollowed out cattle horn. They defend themselves from the British and they also go out to free more slaves. They burn the plantations down after robbing them of all their goods. More than a thousand slaves are freed thanks to Nanny and her maroon warriors. Many of the freed slaves go on to join Nanny's militia. Nanny Town grows to such a strong community that the government grants 500 acres of land for them to settle on. They call this settlement New Nanny Town. No one knows for sure when Nanny died, or even how. Some say she died of old age, and others say her death was at the hands of a British captain. Her story has been passed down largely through oral history, and along the way she has turned into a character of mythic proportions. She practiced Obeya, and so many of her followers believed she was endowed with fantastic powers. It is said that in battle she stopped bullets with her bare hands. Regardless of the validity of these claims, it is undeniable that she has left behind her an inspiring and everlasting impact on Jamaica.